Hey everyone, just wanted to do a quick video on the new features in PID Toolbox version 0.71 that's just released. So I'm just going to open a file here. So for the Pro version, we have some big changes in the filter simulator. You'll notice that we have these sliders to control the cutoff frequencies of your low pass and your notch filters. All you have to do is drag the slider where you want the notch or the low pass cutoff. You still have the option over here to actually plug in a specific number. You can also use the arrows at the end or you can just click in the slider space. But I do recommend you be careful about holding this down. What it does is it sets off a series of processes so every one of those steps gets processed through the filter code and that starts to build up if you start running too many of these at the one time and you could, depending on the speed of your computer, you, this could get frozen. So ideally you just grab the bar and place it where you want to place it. It depends on the speed of your computer but it's just better to just drop this where you want to drop it. The second thing on the list here is the Pro version now has an RPM estimator for visualizing the motor harmonics when RPM data is not available. So if you're running software where you don't have RPM data, for example older versions of Betaflight or any other firmware for that matter, when you go into Spectral Analyzer Frequency Over Time you'll notice that we have down here an RPM estimator. So if I run this, if I don't have RPM data, when I select harmonics, we won't see anything here, you see? But if we select the RPM estimator, what it does is it converts the motor signals to RPM and all the user has to do is change the scale to make it match. So we know, for example, that this is the first motor harmonic. So if we click on the RPM estimator and select the first harmonic, and you can see that it's currently estimating it down here so we simply bring up this number it's around eight for this particular drone and you can see now that it's matching right so remember here we don't have any actual rpm data but we're able to approximate where the actual rpm centers are this is useful because now we can plot for example our three harmonics so let's just plot the first and the second for example and you can see that you would expect the second harmonic in here you also have the variability in motors and so you can you can look at again without RPM data you can still look at where the spectral noise chases a specific motor so you can see here for example that the blue is associated with this particular band of noise that's a little stronger here so you can see that that's motor 3 so it's useful for detecting motor noise from other types of vibration even when you don't have RPM harmonic data. And all you have to do, you just have to play around with the, the multiplier until you get that just right. So now that I'm zoomed in, I can see that we probably need like 8.1. You see that? And now when we zoom in here, we can see it's a better fit. Okay? So, the, and then of course, when you plot your three harmonics, now you get, you can see your third up here. So you can see this drone has a first, no second, and a third harmonic, right? But then you can see as well things like in here, you can see that this is not motor activity in here. Or you can see in here, for example, this band that's just below the third harmonic and then you, you know that this is a resonance band and not the motor frequency. See that? It's a pretty neat little feature and it's, it's quite simple. It doesn't require any RPM data. The next thing is we've added the ability to expand a sub-panel. So I can just click on R and that's going to expand the roll axis. If I go P, then the pitch axis is expanded and Y, the yaw axis. So now when you look at your harmonics, it's much more clear to see things. Now you'll see some deviation. It's obviously not as good as RPM. That's because the motor signals are not going to be identical to the RPM, but it's going to be very close. So it's very useful where you don't have actual motor RPM. So it's very useful in other firmwares like iNav or FETTech or even earlier versions of Betaflight. That's the main differences with the Pro version. So the next interesting change is we have a new trim function. So you'll notice that we got rid of the checkbox for trim. I've always had a bit of a problem with that because the trim function used a process that involved using crosshairs and it was particularly slow. So now what you do is you instead simply tap the I key for in, drag the slider where you want to go, and O for out, and drag the slider to the end of the file. You see that? In, 
out. It'll take some getting used to if you really got used to the trim. So just, just keep that in mind. But I think it's a much more elegant way of doing this. So it's more similar to how Black Box Explorer works. So again, you go press the key first, I, put the slider where you want it, O, put the slider where you want the file to end. So again, I, where you want the file to start, and O, out, where you want the file to end. Okay, so that's pretty neat. We also have a new reset process. So what's neat about this is when you hit reset now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask the same thing, clear the loaded log files, but the entire program is gonna be restarted. So it's gonna ask you again your color theme, but it's much faster than before because it's not actually restarting the runtime. So if you completely close out the program and start again, it has to actually start the runtime as well. But what's neat about this is you don't ever have to completely close out the Pid Toolbox program. And this makes restarting much faster because you're essentially just restarting the Pid Toolbox program. So again, when you hit reset, you get the, your theme question, and then that's it, you're back in business, right? And everything is completely cleared off. So, so that makes things much faster. There's also a couple of minor bug fixes. So we, there was a little bug in the save settings or where it wasn't saving all of the properties. And we also fixed a bug in the PTP log printing. So it was previously printing some unnecessary output during the load process. And this really slowed down loading. So this is gonna be a lot faster. And the last thing on the Mac, there is a fix for the Mac light versus dark theme. So if you weren't aware, Mac computers themselves have light and dark theme. And if you were on the Mac light theme and you chose the PID Toolbox dark theme, then many of these drop downs wouldn't show anything until you click them. And so there's an additional pop up that you'll see when you restart on, the, on a Mac. And that pop up will ask you whether you're on the light or the dark theme. Now I know that Mac also has an, an auto setting for light and dark theme. So if you want to utilize this properly, you should pick either the light or the dark theme. If you pick the light theme, then you're just going to say light theme is selected. If you're on the Mac dark theme, then you're just going to respond to that pop up with no, I'm not using the light theme. Okay. It's also worth noting that version 0.71 is available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. For the Linux version, when you install, it's a little different from the Mac and Windows versions. I won't be including an installer for those because I've noticed that the installer doesn't seem to want to work on Linux. Instead, what you're going to see in the Linux version is you're going to see a README, and in the README, it'll show you where you can download the runtime. It's going to show you where and how to download the proper runtime runtime for this version of PID Toolbox. Now there's technically no changes to the actual Linux runtime. So if you currently have a working version of 0.7 on Linux, then you don't need to upgrade the runtime. You simply grab the main folder and run PID Toolbox from there. And it'll run over your existing version of runtime. That's for Linux users. Other than that, Macintosh obviously has some tricky little aspects for people running M1, M2, or M3 Mac. And I've already made these posts on the Patreon site on how to deal with some of the challenges there. So there you go, PID Toolbox version 0.71 is available for download. Thanks a lot and happy tuning. Yeah.